Hello everyone, this is Walter and welcome to the Film Hermit channel. And today is gonna be my review of The Suicide Squad. Not Suicide Squad 2016, but The Suicide Squad. So this is uh, the next film in the franchise. Uh, I don't know why they just put a thumb in front of it, but I'm gonna just put it right here that um, the first film that came out in 2016, I, I hate it. Uh, it's probably the, the one in the DC universe I hate the most. I always have hated it. And I've been trying to be more kind to films uh, so since then to try to give the filmmaker a chance and try to kind of put it in things in proper perspective. But I went to the theater opening day for the 2016 Suicide Squad and I just really had a terrible experience. So I'm gonna go over the first film briefly and go over the physical copy and talk about the new film. So I have the steel book for, let's see, grab it. This is the steel book for the first Suicide Squad. So you're probably thinking if I hated this movie, why did I buy it on steel book? So I ended up picking this movie up because um, I'm collecting all the DCEU movies on steel book. And when this one came out, they actually did uh, new steel books for the first few movies. So let me grab those as a comparison. So the first movie in the DCEU is Man of Steel. So that's the Superman reboot that came out. Uh, this would have been, uh, let's see. Don't remember the year off the top of my head, but it'll come probably to me later in the video. But this is Man of Steel with Henry Cavill. So they all have like a comic book um, theme to them. So this is the Man of Steel. And then they did Batman v Superman, which had a comic book art on it as well. Let me try to get the glare out of there. And then they had Suicide Squad. So I really didn't want to have to buy this movie on Steelbook, but I kind of wanted them all to be on the shelf and have the same theme. And the kicker was Best Buy knew that a lot of people would feel the same way I did. So they charged a few dollars extra for this Steelbook than they did the other two, just to kind of stick it to us. So this film actually has a really good cast. Uh, Will Smith plays Deadshot and basically Margot Robbie plays uh, Harley Quinn. Now, I've always been kind of conflicted with this film in particular because this film has a, like, a really interesting Hollywood story. So the thing with that movie is that they released a trailer for it and the trailer had a lot of uh, music in it. Actually, the main song they played in the trailer was uh, Bohemian Rhapsody by Queen. And the trailer had a lot of buzz. So the studio thought it was a good idea to have the trailer company edit the movie. And if you've ever seen this movie, you can understand why that was a really bad idea. One of the things I don't like about this film is it just doesn't feel like a film. It feels like a music video. And it has a lot of characters. So a lot of times on the screen, it will just flash the names of the characters on screen and have like their stats of like what their special abilities are and uh, what their crimes are. And it was just really dumb and really lazy storytelling. Like I almost wanted Deadpool to turn to the camera and say, that's just lazy writing. So let's take a look at the inside of the steel book. So let's see, so you open it up and it has the characters on the back, the rest of them. And by the way, this is Katana. You don't want to get killed by her sword because it traps all the souls of her victims in it. That's one of the lines that Flag, Colonel Flag, says in the movie, which is like completely ridiculous, like it's complete exposition, and it's just a really lazy way of introducing a character. It's always bothered me. Um, there's just so many things about this movie that I just couldn't stand. And the thing that really irked me the most about this movie is that there's a good movie in there. I just feel that a lot of scenes were cut and put together in the wrong way. There is an extended cut that's on this edition. It comes in all the editions actually. And it's a little bit more watchable. It's nothing like the Batman v Superman extended cut, which would be an old video into itself. But there are moments that feel more like a movie in this version. Like for example, there's a sequence where all of the, uh, the villains who were the stars of this movie. If you don't know anything about the Suicide Squad, it's based on a comic book series where basically um, the super villains are sent on missions when they're in prison. They're let out of prison just to do special missions for the government and it's secret secret. And basically if they don't, if they deviate from the plan, they get executed. 
uh, they have little bombs inside their head. If they go off mission, they blow up their brains. Um, there's actually an animated movie. Uh, I can't remember the name, but it's Suicide. I think it's called uh, Arkham. I got to look it up because I, I forgot the name. It's a Suicide Squad movie that's animated. It came out the same year this did. It is so much better than this movie. And another of the great things that basically about the animated movie has Batman in it. Batman's in like two scenes in this movie. He really isn't really has presence in the movie. But the movie has terrible editing, um, really lazy storytelling. And in, honestly, a lot of times if I go to the theater to watch a movie and I'm kind of hard on it, when I watch a later at home video, since I'm kind of home and I'm relaxed, I'm a little easier on it. No, this movie, the Latin, when I watched it, I just promised myself I would never force myself to watch it again. But anyway, back what I was saying, there's a bar sequence where all of the characters are just relating to one another, each other, talking. That's the best scene in the whole movie. One of the positive things I will say about this movie, uh, Will Smith is actually really good in it as Deadshot. And uh, Margot Robbie is fantastic as Harley Quinn. I would say that Margot Robbie's performance as Harley Quinn is up there with Robert Downey Jr.'s performance as Iron Man. She's a very, very great actress and she does a really good job in this role. I knew Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn was not a character that was created for the comic book. She was actually created for the Batman animated series for the 90s. And then later she was introduced into the comic books because uh, how popular the character was. There are moments when I'm watching this movie and when I hear her voice and the way she speaks, um, it sounds like the character from the comic book. Um, I'm sorry, the cartoon. And they did a great job. Uh, so basically, I pulled up a couple images here. So the first movie is directed by David Ayer, who's actually a really good filmmaker. Um, I haven't seen a lot of his movies. I, one of his movies he's done is Bright, and he did the original Suicide Squad. And let's see, let me get an image. I'm gonna show you a contrast. So this is, I don't have a setup where I can have images flash on the screen, so until I get my editing system worked out, I'm just gonna show images. This is a picture of David Ayer. So some of his other credits, like I was saying, was Bright, the original Suicide Squad. He did Sabotage, that's a, a later um, um, Arnold Schwarzenegger film. And he did a really good film called Fury with Brad Pitt and Shia LaBeouf. And I've only watched that film one time and I have it on 4K. Uh, but I want to watch it again because I don't remember anything from it, but I remember it being really good. So it wasn't a situation where it was a bad filmmaker. It was a situation where the studio kind of stepped in and kind of put their hands all over it because they were really worried about the performance of Batman v Superman because it underperformed at the box office. And they had made some edits to that film as well. And then that film came out and had a longer cut. This one has a longer cut too, but it doesn't, it's not David Ayer's cut. So they recently um, re-released the extended cut for uh, Batman v Superman. They added the IMAX footage in, which I have right here. If you haven't picked this one up yet, it's on sale for like 12 bucks right now on Amazon. And the video quality in this is amazing. But this is the extended cut of Batman v Superman. And they just did the um, director's cut for Justice League. There's rumors they might do it a longer David Ayer cut for Suicide Squad but they haven't done it yet. So walking into this film in particular, um, you would think that I would be hesitant to watch another Suicide Squad movie, but I knew this one would be much better because it's directed by James Gunn. And the reason for that is I was pretty confident that when he was stepping into this role, uh, he would be given carte blanche to do whatever the hell he wanted. And this is an image of James Gunn. It looks like this is a picture from one of the premieres. So James Gunn is the director, if you don't know, of the Guardians of the Galaxy films. So I think it was about a year and a half or two years ago, what was going on was he was fired from doing Guardians of the Galaxy 3. He had tweeted some things like over a decade ago that um, some people were talking about again, and he got pushed out. And a lot of people were very upset because those films are very popular. Everyone loves the work he does on them. And they kind of felt like, why is this happening? These are things that everyone knew that he said. Uh, I'm not going to go over what it was. It wasn't, but main thing, the stuff that he said was stuff that he said he said in, in jest and he was joking and people took it seriously. These are things he said before he directed the Guardians of the Galaxy films. And these are things that he apologized for after he said them. 
So it, the issue was never about whether or not what he said was correct. The issue was why are they firing him from uh, his job when they knew that he had said these things already before they hired him in the first place back in 2014. So what had happened was a few months had gone by and we had found out that he was going to be writing the new Suicide Squad movie. So as soon as I heard that, I'm like, he's going to direct it. They just don't want to save right now because of everything that's going on. And then shortly thereafter, we find out he's directing it. I'm like, okay, great. So this movie should be much, much better because I don't see him walking in there it's knowing what happened with the last movie and be like, oh, by the way, you guys can edit my film at the end. He probably went in there and was like, I want Final Cut. Um, someone had quoted on another channel that um, they had felt their review of the movie was, which was so great, so I kind of have to steal it. They said this movie is like Warner Brothers gave James Gunn carte blanche to do whatever he wanted. They gave him lots of cocaine and all the money in the world. That's the best way to describe this movie. It is the one of the weirdest films I've ever seen, but it works. And it works in such a specific way. This film does a much, much better job of introducing who all the characters are and what they do. Um, it has a lot of really great characters that you grow to care about in a short period of time. It's got a lot of really great actors in these roles. Margot Robbie comes back as Harley Quinn and Idris Ilba had, plays a character called, uh, I think it's uh, Death, I'm gonna look this up because I wanna get this right. I was gonna say Death Sport, but it's very similar to Will Smith's name. And I was worried when Idris Ilba got uh, hired because um, I love Idris Ilba, but I thought what they were gonna do was they were gonna be like, oh, it's this is the Will Smith character. And I'm like, no, that's not cool. That's not, I hate it when they do that with black actors where they just recast them and we're not supposed to know or think that it's a different person. So they gave him a different character name. And when you see the movie Bloodsport, it was the character name they gave him. When I watched it, I could tell that this was probably originally written for Will Smith. But I read they went ahead and changed his name because they wanted to leave the door open for Will Smith to come back in the future, which I think is a really great idea. So Idris Ilba plays Bloodsport. John Cena plays a Peacemaker. And uh, let's see, Joel Kinnaman comes back as Colonel Flag. And it actually, I liked his character a lot better in this movie. The only actors that really came back from the last movie, Viola Davis comes back as Amanda Waller, Joel Kinnaman comes back as Rick Flagg, and of course, Margot Robbie comes back as uh, Harley Quinn. But that, oh no, I'm actually leaving out one other character, and that was gonna be Captain Boomerang. Jake, Jai Courtney comes back as Captain Boomerang. But other than that, um, it's all new characters. And I'm not gonna get into any spoilers because honestly, I don't wanna ruin this film for anyone. And quite honestly, I don't think this is the kind of movie that you can really spoil. I mean, I can tell you what happened, but I think telling you what happens in the story doesn't really do it justice. You just have to see it to kind of believe it. It's off the wall, crazy, but it has heart and it works. And also I'm leaving out one of the best castings ever. Um, Sylvester Stallone actually plays King Shark. He's That's a, another great actor they got in, in this film. So the best thing I can say about this movie without giving any spoilers, it's funny, it has some great action sequences, and it has heart. And it works 100%. I want to watch it again. Um, this movie is actually available on HBO Max the same day as theaters. And it's available um, as of like this Friday, it came out in theaters and HBO Max. I actually went to the theater to go see it. I was kind of conflicted because me being the film hermit, it's really nice to watch a film at home and not have to deal with crowds, especially with everything that's going on right now. But I really wanted to see this on a big screen. When I watched Wonder Woman 1984, I had a good experience watching it at home because especially since back 2020, we didn't get a lot of movies last year. But this one, I didn't want to watch at home and regret not seeing it on the big screen. And I'm like glad I went to see it on the big screen. Saw it in the Dolby screen at the AMC theater and the sound of this film is amazing. There is some really, really good work of the subwoofer towards the end of the film with some of the, when the disaster sequence starts. Um, I, someone just asked me how good the movie was. I told them it was a really great movie. And I told them to make sure that you turn up your subwoofer because I don't know if you're gonna get that same experience that I got in the theater. Like the whole floor was shaking on that sequence and it was amazing. Uh, so definitely gives that a, a Pause review. If you can go to a theater, or I should say, are you, if you are comfortable going to a theater, 
I'd recommend going to the theater to see it, but I know it's kind of pricey when you want to take a lot of your friends and family with you. And if you have HBO Max, you can, you know, play this weekend and watch on HBO Max. So the Suicide Squad 2021, big improvement over the original film. Um, I read that James Gunn said that this movie isn't necessarily a sequel to the first film and it's not a reboot, but it's kind of its own thing. Um, it could be seen as a sequel because, like I said, characters from the original film carry on to this one, but his statement is accurate. The only real negative thing I can really say about the film, and this has nothing to do with anything that James Gunn did, is that whenever I watch a movie for the first time, I don't know how I feel about it normally until it's over. But in the middle of the movie, I felt anger. And the reason why I felt anger was that this movie is so good that I felt like they wasted my time back in 2016 when I watched the first movie. Because this is what I wanted to see in 2016. And the other film, because of everything that happened, was just a pain to watch. This was just so good. I wasn't used to seeing these characters done so well. It, it just kind of aggravated me like this is what I wanted. Why did I have to wait so long to see it? So positive review for the Suicide Squad. If you can support it in the theaters, that really helps uh, the filmmakers. I feel bad for James Gunn because he invested his heart and soul into this film. And it seems like Warner Brothers is sacrificing the box office to, you know, get HBO Max subscribers. But, you know, honestly, I've been looking, I've been tempted to go see it a second time. And whenever I look online uh, every screening especially Dolby's is nearly full so people are going to the theater still so positive review check out the Suicide Squad uh, it's worth your time um, it's nice talking film with all of you thanks for tuning in if you can please like comment and subscribe that greatly helps the channel I started an Instagram um, it's just the Walter the Film Hermit it only has one post so far because um, the Film Hermit doesn't know how to use Instagram I did one post and I can't figure out how to do a second post. So uh, any of you out there that actually know me in the real world, maybe you can help me out and figure out how to do a second post. So thanks again for watching and you'll have a great day. Bye.